Building custom garden in Minecraft isn't just about placing blocks, it's an expression of pure creativity. Personally, I find creating custom gardens one of the most challenging tasks in Minecraft. As you can see, I built this custom giant spirit tree inspired by the Ori game. I built a huge house and a village and many other structures and farms, but this land around the spirit tree has been bare for very, very long time. I knew that I want to build custom garden. I've been putting it off for hundreds of Minecraft days. So today is a big step for me, because finally I will try to overcome my procrastination and transform what has been on my mind for hundreds and hundreds of Minecraft days into reality. So welcome to my hardcore world and I'm so happy that you will join me today as I will take on this very, very hard task for me. My island is not so big, but it's not small either, so I don't expect to complete the whole job, but I expect to complete a solid chunk in front of my house. So without further ado, let's begin. And we begin with creating a build palette. In the shulker boxes behind me, I collected plenty of wood and leaves from each type of tree. It doesn't mean that I will use all of them, but it really helps to have all of my options on display, right in front of my eyes, and also easily available. Also crafting bench at my disposal and plenty of bamboos. I really like using bamboo blocks in my builds. Also I've got plenty of scaffolds and sticks for crafting stuff. And lots of moss. Well, you see I'm calling my island a jungle island. But technically it's half jungle and half desert. And I want to make desert part more green. But I cannot use grass blocks, because they will not look as nice. Therefore using moss block is my best solution. I want my island to be very lush very green. So first I will transform all this sand part, cover it with moss. Hey, I made a lot of progress. I think it looks nice. Of course I would prefer if it was lush green grass, but I work with what I can. Of course I will leave a bit of sand. It's nice to have a little bit of contrast and it makes sense to have a bit of sand for a shoreline. Also I need to blend it a little bit better. I was peacefully placing all the moss and now I've been disturbed. How did they even spawn here? These guys are rude. Unfortunately, I have some villagers hidden under my base, so I cannot really take down the captain. But I had an idea, and I actually already done them in the past, in my Christmas village. You see, if you put pillager in a boat and then let him use his crossbow until it breaks, he will become completely harmless. So I decided to keep captain, make him break his weapon, and then let him live in one of the rooms. Unfortunately, I have to get rid of these guys. Sorry, you have to go. Bye! Oh, there is also wandering trader. I see my island is so popular and I haven't really done anything yet. Can you all come back later when my island is completely done? It may take a while. I hope you don't mind. Well, this wandering trader is useless, but I want his llamas. If you want to get llama or llama leads without harming anyone, you should put this llama in a boat and it will automatically drop the lead and no one will get angry at you and no llama spit. Win-win. Waiting for this guy's crossbow to break can be very, very tedious work. It may take long time. It's fine as long as you sit with him in one boat. He won't be able to shoot you. Very useful mechanic. As you see, he's trying to shoot, but I'm completely fine. However, his crossbow seems to be enchanted. And if I'm very unlucky, it probably has unbreaking 3 on it. And I cannot waste so much time waiting for it to break. So I will carefully move him into my house and deal with him off camera. Because the point of this video is to build the garden. And I cannot build the garden if I'm being shot. So he can wait somewhere where he cannot really shoot me. 
looks like a nice enjoyable place with a really beautiful view. Well, not so beautiful. At least not yet. It's a process. As you see, I completely covered it in moss. So first I will start from building a walkway. There will be a one major road going straight south. Second major going right into the tree. But before I build the road, I had an idea to build a small stream coming from the tree into the ocean. Not only it will add a little bit of ambience and life into my island, it will also change how the road goes, because I will definitely need a little bridge over the stream, which will make my road a little bit less boring. Well, I call it road, it's more of a pathway. But yeah, let's build a stream. It will start from this little hill right next to the tree. Who knows? Maybe it's the tree who provides the water. Well, in order it was completely different tree, Ginso tree. So about the stream, I think it's a bit more interesting if it's not just flowing, but also creates a little small pools, just like these ones, before continuing into the ocean. I think I will create a multiple small ponds on multiple levels. I think it would be really nice. So let's do it. Also, the stream doesn't need to flow in one direction only. It can split and also flow on this side. I think it's gonna be much better. And you know what? As I'm looking at it, I have another idea. I think I need to create a small little island right there. So the stream can flow in two different ways. Creating a little bit more shapes. Look. Just like that. You know, that's exactly why I was procrastinating with creation of this custom garden. Because, you see, I had a general idea. I knew that I wanted to create a stream. To actually create two streams and then split the other stream with a tiny island. And that's the thing about creative process. Once you start creating, you get more and more inspired. You get so many ideas, but the downside, you end up spending much, much more time than you have ever anticipated. Anyway, the stream shape seems to be done. Now you can only fill it with water. And water physics in Minecraft can be a little bit annoying. So I really, really hope that I can actually direct this stream and make it flow where I want. So starting from the top, thanks to my very, very productive ice farm, I have plenty of ice to create water. I think having this ice is much more useful than using buckets. You just place ice like that. And break it with pickaxe, that is not silk touch. I use fortune for mine, and if you do it correctly, it will turn into infinite water. Of course, it's a little bit harder if the shape is irregular. If it was square, it would have been much easier to fill. The top layer is done. Let's let it flow and see how it goes. Okay, not so bad. Need to add a little bit of extra water on the side. And then I will fill next pond and the remaining of the stream. You can see multiple flows that go into a different pond on another layer and then another pond and then into a smaller stream. I think it looks excellent and my island already looks a little bit better. Of course, I need to decorate the sides of the stream as well as the bottom. Don't worry, I will not leave it as it is. But I needed to create this water before I can start working on my pathway. All the decorations will come in a bit later. And the idea of this pathway is to go all the way straight from my entrance to the water. And I will build big Tory gate to frame the sunrise that I will see from my entrance. And for building the walkways, I will use bamboo. I will use the combination of bamboo blocks and bamboo planks. This pathway will also be consistent with the pathways that I have in the village in front of my house. What I dislike about bamboo planks is that they always face the same direction. Luckily for me, they will face correct direction in my pathway, since it goes from north to south. But for example, stripped bamboo is directional, so you can put it exactly the way you want. So those texture of planks would face the exact direction that you prefer. So it's a small annoyance. But as I said, in this case, it's not a big deal. 
so I used block of bamboo on the sides and bamboo planks in the center of my road. But I had to use a stripped bamboo on the side road because it had different direction. I think I will use some mosaic bamboo to decorate path and at first I wanted my pathway to be a little bit raised above but then again I changed my mind so now I'm adding moss to make the pathway in level with moss. The main path is ready, well ready is a big word, so now I will add some pillars on both sides. I'm making it every 5 blocks and every other pillar will have a lamp post. I added some slabs for easier walkway. And the lamp design is completely identical to the one that I built in the village on the other side of my house. Spruce log, deep slate tile wall, two blocks of warped fence, another deep slate tile wall, verdant frog light, put warped stairs on two sides, and surround the rest with warped trapdoors. Suspend two chains and two lanterns. The design is extremely simple, but I really, really like it. And it looks really, really nice. What a beautiful sunrise. New day, new creation. Next, I will need to create something along this walkway. I will plant a bunch of small trees. Imagine walking this walkway and having greenery on your left and on your right. It will be so, so much better for the small trees. I will use spruce fence and azalea leaves, both with and without flowers. Also, I will add some azalea saplings. They are literally small trees that will not grow. I think it's really nice. All the small trees are 3 or 4 blocks tall, and they are not identical. I was placing leaves consistent, but somewhat randomly, so it created this natural look, but it helped a lot with transformation of this pathway. These bushes are beautiful. I really like to use azalea, and it's so lucky that it doesn't change color even in desert biome, transforming it into green and lush environment. But those are small trees. What about a tree bigger? I always wanted to plant a tree right in this spot. So today I finally do it. I use spruce wood as well as dark oak planks, stairs and fences. And first I start from creating three branches. My inspiration here is from those bonsai trees. Of course it's not bonsai here, it's much bigger. But I like the feeling of crooked stem with three big branching... Um, branches. Also, building a tree that is crooked feels a bit more interesting. It actually adds character to the tree. It feels like it was going through something when it was growing. As for the leaves, I like to create it as big and lush as possible. But then trim it a little to create a lot of irregularities and dithering effect. Also, I added plenty of hanging leaves. But let's not forget that it's Minecraft and creepers can spawn. So I added some hidden lights to illuminate the tree and I like this glowing effect. What do you think about this tree? I really, really love it and I completely winged it. I have not built it in creative prior to this. I just started placing blocks and ended up in this very, very beautiful tree. I'm quite proud of myself. It actually turned out better than I expected. What do you think? When you think about gardens, you think about many, many trees. So after building one tree, it's fitting I will build second one. And my second tree is inspired by spring. It's March outside and I long for warm weather and beautiful cherry blossoms. So for my second tree, I decided to use cherry wood and beautiful pink cherry flowers. This tree will be bigger than the previous one. And this is gonna be the biggest tree on my island, besides the spirit tree, of course. Apart from the cherry wood, I decided to use nether bricks as well as nether fences, slabs and stairs. I use it in order to add a bit more shape to the tree, as well as create small branches. Luckily, nether brick has a similar color to the cherry wood, so it's gonna fit very nicely. 
And as for the leaves, I decided to introduce Pearless and Frog Light. Again, colors fit nicely and it's really nice to have a bit of extra brightness and glow. Also, pink glaze terracotta fits with pink petals and even has a leaf on its design. I thought about adding white or pink wool. I don't think it fits current style. While building, I ran out of leaves, so I had to grow a couple of trees and destroy some of them to get plenty of leaves for my big tree. Can't wait for it to be ready. So what do you think about this tree? I love it so so much. It adds a needed pop of color in this otherwise green oasis. And I think this area right below this tree is perfect to create small yet cozy gazebo to enjoy view to a beautiful sea as well as our lovely island. And the design is very simple. I really, really like this gazebo with lush overgrown vibes. It's very simple and yet so, so beautiful. But I want to add something. First, I will add very simple swing on this cherry tree branch. It fits there so, so perfectly. And on this flat area right beside tree and gazebo, I'll just make a small campfire with some birch logs as sitting area. That's a perfect place for a picnic. That's an amazing place to come and relax. It's probably the best place on my island to meet a sunrise. But right now it's disconnected and the island itself is not ready either. So I think I still have a lot to do. And I will start with connecting pathways with my newly built gazebo and tree. And this pathway will be more simple. I will make it from packed mud, well, from different variations of packed mud, path blocks, some of the jungle wood, maybe I will mix some coarse dirt, also some slopes and stairs for a little bit of texture. I wanted to design a small lantern along this small pathway. I made this simple design, but I don't think it fits very well. You will see, I'll change it later. But what I didn't change is to add some leaves and bushes along the way. So I use a bit different design for my lantern. I think it's just more consistent with my big lamp posts and it blends a little bit better with surrounding colors. I don't want these lamps to stand out too much and this area between pathway and a water stream is what I'm trying to complete in this video today. This area is going to be dedicated to some of my favorite characters from Ori. In fact, I will open you a small secret. Although I'm building fantasy garden, for me it's not enough to build just trees, flowers, bushes. I aim for my garden to have meaning and I'm adding this building by making small builds that I dedicate to some characters that I love. Obviously I really like Ori game. My character in this hardcore series is Ori and I've already built a huge spirit tree. But going big is not always the move. In my garden I decided to make a shrine dedicated to Ku, probably the cutest owl there is. And the statue is quite small and very, very easy to recreate. You can probably follow it along and build it in your world if you want. And hey, if you're paying attention to a detail, look at the left wing. But you know what? 
Kuku shouldn't be alone. Let's build her couple of friends. And who's a better friend than Mok the Brave? And Moki's touches are also very simple and very easy to reproduce. Although it's so so simple, I believe it's quite recognizable. Big ears and long tail. That's Moki, you know. These touches are extremely easy, extremely simple. But these builds mean so so much for me. And that's my biggest recommendation for you when you are building in Minecraft. Just build something that you really really like. It doesn't need to be big because even small things can get you very, very happy. After I built huge spirit tree, I knew it wouldn't be the first Ori built in my world, and it feels very, very fitting to build these touches to my beloved characters. And of course, why are they standing like that in a circle? I'll answer you. They're waiting for the soup to be prepared, warm and delicious. If you played Ori and the Will of the Wisps, you know what I'm speaking about. And these touches are perfect to observe from my little bridge. So now what's left is to complete this small part of my garden. As I said before, it would be impossible to complete the entire island in one video. Even this part that I showed you so far took a lot of hours. It was enjoyable, but it's much more healthier to divide your work into more manageable parts and complete it piece by piece. So speaking about ideas, another thing that I didn't plan and ended up building, it's this patch of sand, sand garden, can't remember the correct name, but I use sandstone, sandstone slabs and stairs to create different shapes reminiscent of that sand in Zen gardens. And on the patch on the moss side, I decided to create bamboo patch. I didn't want bamboo to grow big, so in order to stop growth, I used string. This part of the garden is mainly done. It still needs a lot of details, but I will not focus on them just yet. Because there is one important thing that I want to build today, Tori Gate. I will build it into the water, following this path. Sorry, let me admire it just for a minute. Don't they look so so cute? Hey Ocelots! Hello! So I will build big Tori Gate right here. And the design will be exactly the same as I did before in the village in front of my house. Let me show you. But it's gonna be same design, but it's gonna have inverted colors. Instead of crimson supports, I will do them warped. And the top part will be warped instead of crimson. You will see. And the gate is ready. I really, really like how it looks. It adds frame to my garden, to my island. And it's perfect to meet sunrise in my world. It's so simple, but it adds so, so much. Yes, my island is far, far from complete. But it makes me feel good that I already started the job. Seeing how my world is transformed gives me so much motivation to continue. And I actually have some ideas that I haven't considered before. For example, cliffside. And ravine. Today I've taken big challenge. I've created beautiful pathways with lush bushes and trees. I've built big azalea tree and even bigger cherry blossom. I've built dedicated statues to one of my favorite characters in the game. To be fair, most of the characters in Ori are my favorite. If you played the game, you would understand. So next time, when I will build continuation to this island, I expect some small Ori dedicated builds. But for now, I have to say goodbye. 
I hope you enjoyed this video, so please consider liking it, comment all of your thoughts and of course subscribe if you haven't already. So, see you in my next video. Bye!